Because when we look at this 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 imagery in Ezekiel one four, it's like, what does this look like? What does this look like exactly? You know, and we, we can see from this is that although this is a carnal representation, a perverted representation representation of of uh, a, a truth in God, it at least gives us imagery of what they, this may look like. Although this is used on the dark side. And you see, uh, this is a tempest, it's a, it's a whirlwind, a dark whirlwind. And we understand that God hides himself in darkness, in a cloud, dark cloud. And we see with the, the cherubim in the middle of the cherubim, in the middle of this windstorm, this, this whirlwind was fire, like glowing metal. And you see fire in the middle of this tempest, the storm. To survive so long! Now, one of the ways that these wizards they transport is, is through the medium of a whirlwind. And we understand that God, He rides on the cherub, He rides on the cloud. And the cherub, the cherubim, is also referred to as a whirlwind. God spoke out of the whirlwind in, uh, in Exodus, where God came down on the mountain. It was a big cloud. He spoke out of the cloud. This is a whirlwind. This is the the, the mechanism and, and the makeup of the cherubim. As we see within the whirlwind, we see the four creatures, their faces, and they have all the resemblance of a human. And we have a human this inside you. in the middle of this whirlwind, in the middle of this temple. The obscures. It's a miracle. You are a miracle. Come with me. Think of what we could achieve together. Now, what I want to get to is that the, the initial base meaning of obscurus. The base meaning of obscurus. It relates to shade, darkness, protection hide all these things that is what god uses god hides himself in darkness god hides himself in a dark cloud in the tempest in the storm the whirlwind you see this obscurus the base meaning of it can be translated to a dark cloud is moving with live in the middle a human with fire inside and god has to do this because as it relates to the obscurus of the fantastic piece of the final this is a repressed psychological emotion repressed psychological uh, uh trauma and it, 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 it eats at the person, it kills them. How would relate that to the Bible? Our God is a consuming fire. That's why he has to hide himself and surround himself in deep darkness, this dark cloud, this thicket, this thick cloud, this whirlwind. It's a protection as the cherubim protect the holy things of God. They surround the mercy seat. They surround the throne. They are part of the throne. And God is enthroned above the cherubim, in between the cherubim, above the mercy seat. And God rides on the cherub. The also scripture says God rides on the cloud. We understand that the cherubim, when they were first introduced in scripture, but not the first time we have the cherubim in 
uh, Genesis, but when they were introduced in the description of how they look like, they first were shown as a whirlwind, a cloud, a tempest, a storm. And in Job, it says that God speaks out of a whirlwind. And with whirlwinds, a storm, there is thunder. And that thunder is his voice. And he communicates with that voice. Sound and voice in Hebrew are one and the same thing. There are voices and sounds. Sound of a, of a thunder, the sound of lightning, the sound of fire, the sound of the ocean, the sound of an army. This communication. So how can we tie this in? How can we tie this in? As I go back to the original point, is that the sound of the voice of the triple, the sound of the voice of the wings of the triple when they move, was as the sound, the voice of the Lord God Almighty. So what I propose in my theory is that so when the Lord speaks, their wings are imbued, impregnated by the words of God. So when they move, when the wings move, the words of God ricochet off of them and, and, and they come from, like, like the words of God are stored within the wings of the cherubim. So wherever the cherubim go, the word of God goes with it and is heard when they are Flying, you see, and you understand that the cherubim are within the most holy place, they're within also on the walls, the curtain of the temple, and the curtain between the most holy place and the holy place. So, the cherubim are all throughout the tabernacle and the temple, and we are living temples of God. So when the cherubim, when you interact with the cherubim, when you interact with this whirlwind, this tempest, this storm, you're always going to be hearing, if you, if you have ears to hear the sound of the wings of the cherubim, you will hear the voice of the living God through and with the cherubim, which is ricocheting the voices of God, the voice of God. As the voice of God, it's impregnated and imbued upon the wings of the cherubim. So that when they fly, the voice of God is heard. You see, the voice of God is echoed from the wings. So there's much mystery and power behind it in the cherubim and how they relate to us as new creatures in Christ. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.